In this lecture, we're going to enable PowerShell remoting with group policy. Now, if you're using Windows Server 2019, this is already enabled by default unless you've gone in and turned it off. But I'm going to show you how to test. What we're going to do is click the Start button, and we're going to search for PowerShell. We're going to right-click on PowerShell and run it as an administrator. So what we can do here is I have this member server called uh, MS, and I'll just type in NS lookup to demonstrate MS or SAMS01. So Server Academy Member Server 01. So I can resolve that host name right there. Now, if I want to test the connection, what I can do is type in the test net connection command, and I can specify the port of 5985. And under we're going to say dash computer name, and the computer name is going to be SAMS01. Move my cursor so you can see. I'm going to press enter. If this comes back and succeeds, that means we're going to be able to communicate over the ports that DSC will be communicating and PowerShell remoting will. The next thing we could do is test WS man command and we'll say computer name. I'll finish that computer name, SAMS01. We'll press enter. And if we get a return on this and it's not an error, uh, that's another good sign. Now the final test would be to enter a PS session. So we'll say enter dash PS session computer name. And we'll say SAMS01. And if this allows us to remote in, then everything that we need for DSC to run is already configured. So we, and we see that I have the PowerShell session uh, open. So if I type in hostname, I get SAMS01. If I type in IP config, I'm going to get the IP address of SAMS01. Now, if you're using something older, like uh, Server 2016 or Server 2012, this will not be configured by default. Or, you know, you may be in Server 2019. But maybe you've turned this off uh, due to security concerns or something along those lines. So what we're going to do is in our network, we have a domain controller and a member server. We're going to allow connections uh, through PowerShell remoting from only the domain controller. So it'll be as secure as possible. So to get started, we're going to create a group policy object. So in the domain controller, we're going to select tools and we're going to click on group policy management. Once that comes up here, I'll drag it to the middle and I'll expand this side here and just maximize the screen. And I'm going to expand the forest and I'm going to expand domains. We're going to expand ad.serveracademy.com, which is in the name of my domain. And let's just right click and say, create a GPO in this domain and link it here. I'm going to call this enable PS remoting. Okay, so now I will left click on this GPO, click OK on that pop up. And I'll say edit. All right, so now we are ready to edit the group policy object. We have to do three things. The first thing we're going to do is allow remote management through Windows RM. So we're going to go to computer policies or computer configuration, rather, administrative templates. So we're going to go to computer configuration, policies, administrative templates, and I'm going to expand this some more. Let's go to Windows component, and I'm just going to click this and type in Windows Remote. And that will bring me down to the Windows Remote Management down at the bottom. Let's go to WinRM Service. And this first option here that says Allow Remote Server Management through WinRM. We're going to double click on this. And we're going to say Enabled. Now here you can specify the filters that you want to use to allow the connection. So you can do a star for any host or you can enter a specific IP address range. However, I have never had, at least on Windows Server 2016, I've never had an IP address range actually work. It always fails. So I have to do a star here and we'll restrict it on the firewall, um, you know, to only allow connections from our domain controller. So I'm going to leave this one blank. And that means we're not going to be filtering for any IP version six addresses. So I will go ahead and click on OK. And now we're going to scroll up here. And we're going to go under, we're going to minimize this, go to Windows settings. We'll click on security settings. And we're going to go to the Windows Defender firewall with advanced security. We'll expand that again and we'll left click on inbound rules or right click on inbound rules rather. And we'll select new rule. So now let's click on predefined. And from the list, we're going to choose the Windows remote management. So second from the last option. Then we'll click on next and we're going to uncheck this public because we don't want to allow any public remote management. All right. And this is opening the firewall to any service uh, on any IP address that's on the domain or private network. We're going to restrict that down even further 
so that uh, you know we only allow them minimum uh, necessary access. So I'm going to click on Finish. And we're going to right click on this rule that it created up here and click Properties. Now let's go under Scope. And under Remote IP Addresses, we want to enter the IP address of the server that will be doing the DSC pushes. And in my case, it's going to be 192.168.1.10. Now you can find that out by hitting Start and opening PowerShell or Command Prompt, doesn't matter which, and typing in IP config. So 192.168.1.10 is the IP address of this domain controller. And this is the server that I will be doing my DSC pushes from. So this is the server's IP address that we need to allow the connection from. So I'm going to click OK. Under Advanced, I'm going to turn off the private profile and only configure this on the domain profile. Now I'll click OK. And the last thing we need to do is make sure that the Windows Remote Management service is running. So if we click here on System Services and we go down to the bottom, we can find remote Windows Remote Management. So I'll expand this so we can see it, uh, or WS-Management. So let's double click on this, and let's say define this policy setting and change it to automatic. Then we'll click Apply and click OK. So now we're going to close this Group Policy Management Editor. We're done. We can review the settings by clicking the GPO and then selecting Settings here. We can see the, uh, the changes that we've made. Just verify that all the settings are as you expect. Uh, I've run this a few times and had scenarios where uh, the GPS settings that I was configuring did not take effect. And I just expect that to be a bug. Uh, that was also on server 2016. Uh, but just to be safe, it's a good idea to review these. So uh, we're looking, we have system services, Windows Remote Management. And if I show that, I can see the settings uh, here, ex the exact settings that I have. Startup mode, automatic, and uh, that it's enabled. Uh, for Windows Firewall, we can see that we have the inbound rules. And this is 5985 for the domain. And uh, we have here allow remote management through Windows RM. And then we have the IP version 4 address filter. Okay, so now what we're going to do is switch over to our member server and I'm going to log in. And we're going to run a GP update on the server. So I'll go ahead and click the start button. I'll type in PowerShell. And you can do PowerShell or you could do command prompt, it doesn't matter. We're going to type in GP update forward slash force and I'll press enter, and it's gonna update the group policy on this computer. Now, just real quick, one of the differences between this and DSC is group policy, when we make a configuration, we have to go to the clients and pull those changes. With DSC, when we push changes, they take effect immediately. So another thing we can do is uh, exit this. Okay, I'm just gonna resize this here. And one thing we can do is type in GP result forward slash R and slash scope and say computer. So GP result forward slash R slash scope computer. So what we're going to do is get all the applied group policy objects for this computer. Here we can see computer settings and applied group policy objects. We should see the new GPO that we just made, which is enable PS remoting. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to go to domain controller. And again, I'll open PowerShell. Of course, this already worked before, but we're just going to rerun through those tests that we did earlier. And uh, what we're going to do is say test dash net connection. And I'm going to say port 5985 and computer name is going to be SAMS01. We'll just make sure that that succeeds. Okay, so the TCP test succeeded and it says true. So now let's do test dash WS man. And we're going to say computer name SAMS01. And finally, since that worked, we're going to say enter PS session dash computer name, SAMS01. And I'm using tab completion to type that in so fast. Okay, so we're now logged into the computer through PowerShell Remoting, so we are good to go to make our DSC configurations. So good job getting through that lecture. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one.